Charlie Wilder bass line that is seriously groovy and seriously catchy but does not take attention away from the vocals and other instruments? The answer coming up, but first, T. Welcome to the Hack Music Theory Show, I'm Ray Harmony and just before we jump into the lesson today, three quick things. Number one, if you need to firm up your music theory foundation, download our free book, 12 Music Theory Hacks to Learn Scales and Chords. <laughs> the link is below. Number two, if you want me to teach you how to write great songs from start to finish, then join our online apprenticeship program on Patreon by selecting our artist tier. That link is below as well. Number three, if you don't want to miss our new video on YouTube every week, then hit subscribe below and then hit the bell for notifications. All right, let's crack on. Okay, so the chord progression that we're going to be writing a bass line for is the same chord progression we've been looking at over the last couple of videos. Uh, it's from the chorus of our new single, Eyes Love For You, and it's in D Dorian, which is just all the white notes uh, with D as the root. And the chords are D minor, F major, C major, and G major. All right, and then we can select all this MIDI and mute it because uh, these root notes are just going to act as the template over which we're going to write our bass line. And I've got the chords playing on a piano track, um, so you'll hear that going along. Uh, so you'll have a context for the bass line as we write it. So the very first thing we're going to do is double the cycle. What I mean by that is, uh, as you can see, the chord progression is currently two bars long. So instead of writing a bass line that is also two bars long, we're going to double it and write a bass line that is four bars long. So this bass melody is actually going to go over two cycles of the chord progression. So let's copy and paste our root note template over another two bars. And now we've got four bars to play with for our bass line. So this is going to give us a bass line that's way more interesting than just looping around two bars, uh, kind of lining up with the chord progression. So now we can extend it, double the length, and therefore double the longevity of this melody. So next we just select all the MIDI again and copy and paste it up an octave, and then we unmute it. So now this is going to be the beginning of our bass line. So writing a melody for bass is really different to writing a melody for other instruments like uh, lead synth or vocals, for example, because when we write for the bass, we do need to take into account that this is forming the foundation upon which everything else is going to be built. All the harmonies, all the melodies for the whole song are sitting on the bass. So it needs to be super solid and there ain't nothing more solid than a root note. So in order to take the weight of all the melodies and harmonies built on top of the bass, we do need to play more root notes in our bass lines than we would another melody on another instrument. Once again, like lead synth or vocals. All right, next up, we are looking at range. So in other words, how low can you go? literally, because if we want our bass line to sound somewhat realistic, we need to work within the limits of what a bass guitar can actually play. So in other words, how low a bass guitar can go. Uh, we've got two types of basses. We've got a four string bass, which takes you down to E uh, in the standard way of tuning it. Uh, and then we've got a five string bass, which takes you down to that low B. Um, and you can see this is definitely looking like it wants to be played on a five string. Uh, I mean, we've barely started, but it's already obvious that this is a, a job for a five string because uh, we're in D Dorian, which means D is obviously the most important note um, and D is already too low uh, for what we could play on a four string in standard tuning. So um, whenever you're writing a bass line, if you want it to sound realistic, take into account uh, how low a bass guitar can go. Um, and then everything that's too low, um, just shoot it up an octave. Um, so these G's over here, um, which are way too low, uh, we throw them up an octave and now we're totally comfortably in the range of a five string bass guitar. All right, now that everything is playable, let's have a listen. Now you'll notice that that is sounding rather sluggish. So a great way to inject momentum into our bass lines is to play beats two and four. Those are called the back beats and that's what our snare drum is 
spanking and the drum groove. So locking it in with the drums is gonna give our bass line some serious forward propulsion. And we do this by simply splitting our notes on every beat two and every beat four in every bar, except it's really cool to leave one or two backbeats not locked in with the bass and the drums, um, so you create some overlapping. Uh, so let's leave this note over here intact, so we're not gonna actually play that backbeat here, um, but then we are going to on the four there. Um, and then we're into the last bar, B2 and B4, and we're done. So let's have a listen to this with the backbeats. Now, all roots and no thirds makes our melody a dull bass line. So we want to move some of the root notes onto thirds because it's the third note in every chord that makes that chord happy or sad, depending on if it's major or minor. So in order to add emotion into our bass line, we need to play some thirds. And I think the perfect place to do that is over the F major because we've just come from a D minor chord and now it's time to brighten things up because this is is a really positive and uplifting chorus. So let's move the F up to A. So now we're playing the three because A is the three over F major. And then the second time round, when the chord progression plays F major again, we don't have to do the same thing because we doubled the cycle of our bass line. So we can actually do something different. So that, that adds variation. So the next time you hear the F major chord, let's start on F and then we go up to the A on the backbeat. All right, now it's time for one of my favorite hacks. We're gonna go through and break up all the perfect fourth and perfect fifth melodic intervals. So what's a perfect interval and why should we break it up? Great question. A perfect interval is created from two notes that vibrate perfectly together. But as a result, that means they kind of sound a bit boring because they're so similar. And when you use a perfect interval in a melody from one note to the next note, it ends up sounding kind of boring. So what we like to do is shove a really colorful note in between to break up that perfect interval and create a much more emotional and powerful melody. One of the most fun things about this hack is that you end up with a melody that you would never normally write and neither would anyone else. All right, so let's get to work on these perfect intervals. So a perfect fourth is the interval of five semitones and a perfect fifth is the interval of seven semitones. So whenever you see that interval uh, between two notes in your melody, you wanna get a note in between there. So from D up to A, that is seven semitones. So that's a perfect fifth and we wanna break it up. We've already actually chopped this note here on the backbeat, so it's super easy. We can just move this note to something else like the C, which would be the flat seven, over D minor, and then we end up with a really strong uh, melodic movement, and we've now made a motif as well. So a motif is a short musical idea that we can reuse, and it gives our melody structure, and therefore makes it super catchy. So we can actually do the same thing again, where we go from the one, and then shoot up to the flat seven, and then down. So we can do that same thing over the next bar, uh, which is over the chord C major. So we can go from C, and then we can shoot up to the B, which is the seven over C major, and then we come down to the G over the G major chord. So have a listen to this motif that's, that's turning up here. <laughs> yeah. And you'll find that breaking up these perfect fourth and perfect fifth melodic intervals always throws up some motif that you can use and turn your bass line into a super catchy melody. All right, and then we just got a few more perfect intervals to break up. Uh, so you can see from the G down to the D, that is five semitones, so that's a perfect fourth. We don't want that. Um, so we just split the note, uh, we just split that G, and then we move the split note, the second part of it, um, to a different note. Uh, let's move it to E. So we're gonna have a little descending uh, line down to the D again. Uh, and this is starting the second part of our of our bass line now. Um, and then we, uh, we're we all good to the end here where we've got the C up to the G, and that is seven semitones, that's a perfect fifth. Um, so let's break that up. And sometimes what's really cool to do is to, um, to go in the wrong direction 
first. Um, so instead of putting this note somewhere in the middle here, um, we go in the wrong direction. So we actually go down. So we want to go from C up to G. So we actually go down first and then up because that's also broken it up and we've created a, a really kind of thrillingly unpredictable melodic movement now. Um, okay, and then we're on to the last note. Always remember there's a hidden interval from your last note back around to your first note. And that is G down to D, so five semitones again. Um, so we need to break that up, so split the note, and then we can move that, um, the split G, we can move that down to E, which is the same thing we did at the end of the first half here. Um, so we're doing that same thing again. Uh, okay, let's have a listen. So here we go. And with that, we're into the final stretch. We just want to inject some more energy and life into this bass line because playing all those backbeats has kind of made it sound a bit rigid. So we want to loosen it up a little bit with some syncopation and syncopation is accenting the off beats. So there's a few of them here, but um, the main one I want to focus on is this, uh, the first D in the second half of our bass line because uh, this is the one that we didn't actually cut to play the backbeat so that beat two um, so it's not actually playing that with the drums which gives us gives it that cool um, kind of rolling over the beat sound because then you really hear the syncopation of the next note which is on that two and so the offbeat eighth note and that two and is a favorite accent in hip-hop and edm and it's just a super syncopated groovy uh, offbeat to play so we're going to jump on that one here um, and we want a little bit more than that so let's actually um, do the same thing in uh, the first beat so we're going to play the offbeat eighth um, in the first beat, so we're going to go one and and then two and. So this, this little section here is going to be super syncopated now. Um, and then at the end, I just want to kind of up the syncopation again. Um, so we'll play the three and um, at the very end as we kind of run back down to the beginning. So have a listen to that with the uh, with the syncopation. And then a super groovy little hack that you can use along with syncopation is uh, wherever you've got a syncopated note, the note before, you could actually shorten that. So if you change your grid to 30 second notes and then you just shorten it by one 30 second note um, and now you just got this little, little gap in between them. So that kind of creates a little bounce on that on that first note. Um, so you've detached these two notes. That's what we call staccato. So this note is staccato. You bounce on it. Um, and it really does give bass lines an amazing bounce. Um, check this out. Check this out. Try not to dance with, with the bounce. Here we go. Yeah, it's impossible not to bounce to that. Okay, we got one last thing and then we're done. Uh, so we're going to add a decoration now. So sometimes we have a whole bunch of the same note like we do at the end here on that G. Um, it's cool to add a little decoration. So decoration is just where you uh, take a note, um, cut it, so we're making it shorter, and then just move away from that note and then go back to it. So we're going G up to A and then back to G. So all this does is it just creates a little bit of spice on a note um, that would otherwise be a little bit lacking. Um, so it doesn't really change the melody that much, um, but it just adds a little bit of interest, a little bit of flavor. And the cool thing is we get this um, kind of extended little descending run now um, from the A to the G to the E and then back around to the D. So with that, we are done. By the way, if you want more help writing awesome bass lines, please check out my songwriting and producing PDF. The link is below. And just before I play the final version, I want to say a huge thank you for watching and we'll see you next Thursday on the Hack Music Theory Show. Until then, happy songwriting and producing.